Hello and welcome to the third part of the VR character series. Before we start, I want to let you know that this series will be recreated in C++ when it is done. I chose to do blueprints only first, since this probably helps more people. Anyway, in this part we will add a movement system with animations. Let's start by cleaning up our nodes from the last part and create some variables for frequently used values so it's easier for us to change them during testing. Open the VR character blueprint and create the following public float variables. Crouch ratio, prone ratio, base walk speed, base run speed, base prone speed, current body running offset, base body running offset, body camera offset and body prone offset. To calculate the player's velocity, we will create two new vector variables called last camera location and camera velocity. To know when the player is running, we are going to use a bool variable called isRunning. Make sure to make the variables instance editable, so you can edit them in any instance of the blueprint. I will tell you throughout the tutorial which variable is used for what and why. Now go to the update mesh location and rotation function. Get the prone ratio variable and input it everywhere where we use the value 0.3 and make sure to set it as its default value. Then do the same with the crouch ratio variable and set 0.6 as its default value. We also want to control the prone offset so get the body prone offset and input it into the previously hardcoded node. Before I used the value of 30 which was just randomly chosen but now I have changed it to 69 which is approximately the distance between the pelvis and the head bone. Input the body camera offset into where we set the offset before and change the default value of the variable to 20. In the middle section where the world offset node connects to the false output of the branch, we want to add the current body running offset to the body camera offset, since the running animation leans forward a bit and you would otherwise be able to see our mesh. Set the default value of the base body running offset to 30. Let's get to the movement system. Create a new function called update movement speed. We use this function to adjust the movement speed based on the player's height ratio, meaning he will start to slow down when transitioning from crouching to proning. Start by getting the height ratio and add a branch, checking if its value is less or equal than the crouch ratio. Next, map range clamp the height ratio from the prone ratio to the crouch ratio. For the output range we want to go from the base prone speed to base walk speed. The default value for the base walk speed is 150 and for the base prone speed 25. Get the camera movement and set the max walk speed to the clamped value when the branch condition is true. After that, set the current body running offset to zero and is running to false. From the false output, drag out a new branch. Here we want to check if the Y value of the IA move input is less or equal to zero, so we know when to stop running. If the condition is true, set the max walk speed to the base walk speed, the current body running offset to zero and is running to false. From the false output, drag out another branch and check if the player is running. If he is, set the max walk speed to the base run speed and the current body running offset to the base body running offset. The default value for the base run speed is 400. If is running is false, set the max walk speed to the base walk speed and the current body running offset to zero. At last, go to the event graph and call the update movement speed function after the second add movement input node. Expand the input event node and set is running to false when the input is complete. Now we can continue with calculating the camera's velocity. Create a new function called Calculate Camera Velocity. Get the camera's world location and subtract the last camera location from it and divide it by the world delta seconds. This is the camera's velocity. Then set the last camera location to the current camera location. Now go to the event graph and call the Calculate Camera Velocity function in the tick event. We manually calculate the camera's velocity because the get component velocity node does not return a velocity when the player moves in real life. And this way it doesn't matter if you move in real life or in game. The velocity will always be calculated correctly. Next we want to set up some new inputs. Go to input, actions and create three new input actions called IA jump, IA run and IA turn. IA jump and IA turn have a value type of bool. IA turn has a value type of axis 1D float. In the input mapping context, set up the inputs to the buttons you like. I'm going to use the left thumbstick button for running, the right thumbstick button for jumping, and the right thumbstick x-axis for turning. Back in our VR character, call the IA run event and set is running to true when the event has started. For the IA jump, you can decide if you want the player to be able to hold the button and to continue to jump, or if you can only jump once per button press. I will continue jumping so I connect the branch to the triggered output and check if the height ratio is greater than the crouch ratio. If it is, call the jump function. 
for the IA turn input, I call add controller draw input, connect it to the triggered output and connect the action value to its input. All we need to do now is to set up the animation blueprint and blend spaces. I've already imported some retargeted animations from Mixamo. I wanted to include links for every animation so you can get them yourself, however I didn't find a way to include a link that gets you directly to the animations on Mixamo. It only gave me the link for the current search result. To save you from manually having to search and retarget the animations yourself, I uploaded all the targeted animations to a Google Drive folder and added its link to the description. Just download the zip folder and import the animations to your project. Make sure to select the many skeleton when importing. This also works for Unreal versions older than 5.5. If you still want to import your own animations from Mixamo, I'll leave a link to my Mixamo retargeting tutorial and the short that fixes the root bone problem in the description. Before we start, go to the Stand Walk F Slow and Stand Walk B Slow animations and set the rate scale to 1 third. For some reason this got reset when exporting those animations. We need these slower animations because Unreal sometimes has issues blending idle to walk or run animations when only moving slowly. Now that we have our new animations we no longer need the height blend space or the animation starter pack from the last video so we can delete those. Let's create the new blend spaces. Right click in the content browser and select blend space in the animation section. We need three blend spaces, BS prone, BS crouch and BS stand. Let's do the proning first. In every blend space we want the horizontal axis to be called direction with a minimum axis value of minus 180 and a maximum of 180. Set the grid divisions to 2. We always want to enable snap to grid and always set a smoothing time of 0.3. The smoothing time makes the transition less choppy and can help with instability. The vertical axis is called speed with a minimum axis value of 0 and a maximum of 25. Here we only need one grid division. Get the prone idle animation and set it to every value on the bottom. Set the prone move F animation at direction 0 and speed 25. At last, set the prone move B animation at the positive and negative 180 directions and at a speed of 25. For the prone movement we won't be using sideways animations, mainly because I haven't found any good ones. Next, open the crouch blend space. Set the horizontal grid divisions to 4 and the vertical to 1. The vertical axis should have a minimum value of 0 and a maximum of 100. Set the rest as before. Fill the bottom row with the crouch idle animation. Set the crouch walk F at direction 0, 0.0 and speed 100. The crouch walk B animation is at positive and negative 180 degrees. At positive 90 degrees we want the crouch walk R animation and at negative 90 crouch walk L. Now all that is left is the stand blend space. Set the horizontal grid divisions to 4 and the vertical divisions to 16. The speed ranges from 0 to 400. Fill the bottom row with the stand idle animation. Then at direction 0 and speed 25, add stand walk F slow. At speed 150, stand walk F. And at speed 400, stand run F. Then at positive and negative 180 degrees, add the stand walk B and slow variant animation. And at 90 degrees, the left and right animations like we did in the crouch blend space. I don't know why yet, but Unreal seems to have an issue blending the animation when transitioning from walking forward to walking left, but you can always add more animations to refine the movement. The last thing we need to do is to update our animation blueprint. But first, let's clean things up. Create a new function called get height ratio and make it pure. In that function, get the VR character reference and check if it's valid. If it is, return the player's height ratio. If it's invalid, return zero. Now go back to the event graph and remove the previous logic where we set the height ratio and remove the variable. Next, create a new function called setCameraRotation and copy the existing logic into it and call the function in the event graph. Then do the same for the motion controllers with a function called setMCTransforms. Now we can begin adding the new functions. The first function is called getSpeed and should be pure. Get the VR character reference, check if it's valid and if it is, return the 2D vector length of the camera velocity variable. Otherwise, return zero. Next, we need a function for calculating the direction from where we are currently moving compared to where our camera is looking. Create a pure function called getDirection. Again, get the character reference and check if it's valid. 
Then get the camera velocity and the camera's rotation. Get the calculate direction node and calculate the camera rotation jaw direction for the camera velocity. Then we return that value. If the player isn't valid, return zero. We also want to create pure functions for getting the crouch and the prone ratios. At last, we create a pure function called getIsFalling, where we return is falling from the character movement. Great! Now all the background logic is set up to start blending our animations. Switch to the AnimGraph tab. In the current Layered Blend Per Bone node, change the bone name in the branch filters to Spine 5. The base pose pin should now be empty since we deleted the height ratio variable and the BS height blend space. If they're still there, then you can delete them now. Right click and add a blend poses by bool node. Connect the get is falling function to its value. Set both blend times to 0.2 and connect the mm fall loop animation to the true pose. The fall animation is from the mannequin asset pack, which we added last time. Then add a layer blend per bone node and connect it to the false pose. Add a branch filter to the pelvis bone. Get the BS stand blend space and connect it to the blend poses zero input. Get the direction and speed and connect them to the blend space. We want to blend between the stand and crouch or prone animations based on the height ratio. So, get the height ratio and the crouch ratio and add a map range clamp node. The height ratio is the input value and the range is from the crouch ratio to 1.0. The out range is between 0.0, .0 and 1.0. Connect the output of the range to the blend weight. Duplicate the layered blend per bone node and connect it to the base pose input. Connect the prone blend space to the base pose and the crouch blend space to the blend pose's zero input. The branch filter should still be the pelvis. Get the height ratio again and connect it to a map range clamp node. It should range from the prone ratio to the crouch ratio. The output range is from 0.0, .0 to 1.0. It's possible that you get a warning saying that the blend spaces use potentially threat unsafe calls. However, we checked in the get functions if the VR character is valid so you can ignore these messages. And we're done! You can now put on your VR headsets and test the movements. Remember, you can always refine things by adding more animations or by adjusting blend times. In the next tutorial, we will be looking at how you can physically grab things and how to set up dynamic hand animations. Until then, let me know in the comments if you need any help. If this video was helpful to you, make sure to like and subscribe, and I will see you next time. Bye!